So we've just seen what happens if the overhead term is dominating the recursion term in a, in a, a divide and conquer recurrence relation. But what happens if it's the other way around? So what happens if the recursion is heavy somehow, but the, the overhead is quite small? Right? So what happens if the, if the recursion, or what would it even look like for the recursion to somehow dominate the overhead? So case number two is what if f of n is small relative to a. Right? And so here's a, an example of a recurrence relation that actually captures this. So what if t of n equals 3, t of n over 2, plus 1? So our overhead now is tiny. Right? Each time we recurse, we have constant time overhead, just like we did in binary search, just like we did in the max find. Right? So we have very fast overhead. But we have a recursion term that, that does something strange. Right? It, it, makes, it cuts the input in half, and then it makes three recursive calls on half the size of the input. So this one now, it doesn't make as much sense to think of this as an array algorithm. You, you could think of it as a very poorly programmed array algorithm that mistakenly recurses twice on one half of the array or something like that. But rather, I mean, I mean this is an actually, it's a, it's a well, you know, it's a well-defined thing for certain kinds of algorithms. For example, we'll see a matrix multiplication algorithm that has a recurrence relation that's related to this. Okay, so what would this recursion look like? Oh, and I'll just, I'll just say, let's let t of 1 equal 1, right? So we'll have some constant effort uh, at the leaf of the, of the recursion tree. So what does this recursion tree look like? Well, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated to draw, okay? So what we have is we have uh, our 8-element array to begin with, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm still going to visualize this as an array, even though array doesn't make as much sense anymore here because we have three recursive calls on half the size. Uh, and so what happens is we, we imagine cutting this in half and then, and then making three recursive calls on something half the size. So at our, at our top level of recursion, we have a size 8 array. At our second level of recursion, we have three size 4 arrays. So one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. At our next level down, now we have for each of these, we're gonna get three arrays. Right? So here we'll have three size two arrays. So, so there's a size two, size two, size two, right? From from that leftmost. And then we have a size 2, a size 2, a size 2. And here we have a size 2, a size 2, and a size 2. Right? So from the top, at, the, at the top level, we have one array. In the middle level, we have 3. In the next level down, we have 9. And now in the next level down, we're going to have how many? Well, I may not write them all out. Forgive me for not writing them all out. But we'll have 27. Right, so how many arrays in each? Uh, well, if, if, we, if we think about this in terms of powers of 3, here we have 3 to the 0 arrays. Let me say number of arrays. So the, the actual number of recursive calls that get made here. So here we have 3 to the 0. Here we have 3 to the 1. Here we have 3 to the 2. And then down here we're going to have this you know, crazy blizzard of, of, of size 1 arrays. Uh, which we can express with 3 to the 3. Right, so this is 1, 3, 9, 27. Right? At the very bottom, we have 27. So there are 27 leaves in the tree. Right? 27 base cases of the recursion get executed. Uh, 27 leaves in the tree or 27 base cases. All right. So this is this is uh, this should worry us uh, at least a little bit here, right? Now we have a huge amount of effort that's going into the into the bottom of this of the recursion tree, even though the, the tree is not all that deep, 
there is there is quite a huge amount of effort that that gets expended down there. Um, and so what we end up with is if the input size, and so this is one way of thinking about the size of trees as well. If the input size, suppose n is eight, like we've written here, then what we get is uh, is the number of leaves. The number of leaves is uh, is twenty seven, and so those two numbers aren't obviously related uh, initially. But you know, you notice eight, eight, eight is two to the three, and twenty seven is three to the three. So if I have two to the k, if, if n is two to the k, then the number of leaves in the recursion tree is going to be three to the k. So there's a there's this funny little exponential scaling thing that happens um, with the number of leaves in the tree. And we can actually work this out in detail. And, and you've done several examples that look something like this. Um, but if we were to work this thing out in general, what we would end up with is a recurrence relation that is in the following complexity class. Uh, big theta of, uh, of n to the log base 2 of 3, which is approximately big theta of n to the 1.58. Okay, and so this law n to the log base two of three captures exactly how many leaves there are in a recursion tree, right? In a, or in a in a tree that has three branches at each level, uh, and and and, uh, and and so on, right? So so in a ternary tree uh, that looks like this, we have exactly exactly 27, uh, 27 leaves. All right, so what does this mean? Well, one, one point, n, n to the 1.58 isn't completely obviously connected to anything that we see here on the page. Um, but what it, essentially what it means is that we can have a case where the f of n is small and the a dominates. And what that means for the a to dominate is that the majority of our complexity in our algorithm actually comes from executions of the recursion base case. And so that's what this, this, uh, this scenario is, is capturing for us.